Good morning. Uh, welcome to the fourth lecture of this uh, course on uh, advanced computer algebra. In the first three lectures we have been talking about polynomial multiplication. Today we will talk about uh, division with remainder. But before doing so, let's briefly uh, summarize uh, what we did so far. In the first lecture we talked about uh, uh, Karatsuba's algorithm and its generalizations. Um, and the idea of Karatsuba leads to algorithms that are faster than quadratic time. Quadratic time is the uh, complexity of the standard multiplication algorithm if you multiply polynomials in the way how polynomial multiplication is defined. Karatsuba's algorithm is better, it's still polynomial time, um, so that means it's, uh, it has a complexity of n to the alpha for a certain alpha, uh, but using this idea you can make the alpha as close to 1 uh, as you wish, so you can get as close to linear time as you wish. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work very well in practice because uh, it's only an asymptotic estimate and the n has to be extremely large if you really want to observe uh, a complexity that is, uh, has an exponent that's very close to 1. Extremely, extremely large means here um, too large for reasonable computers. Um, so we want to compute with large polynomials, but large means that the degree is maybe a million or maybe 10 millions or something like this, uh, but the degree cannot be uh, the number of atoms in the universe or something uh, of this sort because there's no way to compute with such big uh, polynomials. Okay, so that's uh, why this was not yet the end of the story. We had to uh, work some more and we continued in the second lecture. Uh, with uh, an algorithm that works for polynomials uh, over a domain that is sufficiently uh, well behaved. And sufficiently well behaved in this case means that it contains uh, roots of unity. A root of unity is an uh, element of a ring uh, that, uh, uh, which has a power that is equal to 1. And if you have such an element then you can perform the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is a matrix that turns a uh, a coefficient vector of a polynomial into a value vector of the polynomial. It evaluates the polynomial at a root of unity and all its powers. And this is useful for polynomial multiplication because uh, the values of the product of two polynomials is the product of the values of two polynomials. So if we have f and g given in terms of the values at certain points, for example, but not necessarily at uh, powers of roots of unity, then we can get the uh, values of h, the product of f and g, at these points by just multiplying the values of f and g at every point. And this takes linear time, so this is uh, fine. Uh, it's not uh, anything that we have to worry about. What we have to worry about and what costs time uh, is really the, the transformation, the Fourier transform that turns coefficients into values or the inverse that, con uh, con uh, that transforms the values back into coefficients. And we have seen that this can be done ex extremely efficiently uh, using the, yeah, the algorithm of Cooley and Tukey um, that uh, performs this task in, uh, using n log n operations in the ground field. n log n, this is really fast, uh, this is almost linear time. The, the log n uh, uh, is, uh, well, it's not, not quite a constant, but it's, it's, uh, it's exponentially slower than n itself. So you will, uh, uh, you, you will not uh, easily see this in, in a plot uh, of, the, of the performance. Okay, um, this was the content of the second lecture. And in the third lecture, we turned to a more general setting. Uh, we have polynomials over an arbitrary commutative ring. And we, uh, we don't want to make the assumption that the ring contains roots of unity of large order. This may not be a justified assumption because if you think of the integers, there are only two roots of unity, uh, one and minus one. One is the first root of unity and uh, minus one is the second root of unity, but we need nth root of unity for large n and there are no such elements in the integers. So that means we have to uh, do something about it if we still want to use the FFT and we do want to use it. And we have seen that this is possible by turning the x of the polynomial ring itself into a root of unity. So we take, we take this uh, 
a polynomial, a ring, and take it mod x to the n minus 1 for a certain n, and that makes x into a primitive nth rule of unity. And this can be uh, uh, used, this idea, to construct a recursive algorithm um, that uh, computes the product of two polynomials using the FFT and using this uh, artificial uh, root of unity um, in the FFT. Um, uh, we have to pay a price for uh, creating this root of unity because we are uh, counting operations in R and not operations in some uh, modified version of R. And the price for getting the rule of unity is very small. It's just log log n. I said a minute ago that log n is very small compared to n. And in the same sense, log log n is very small compared to log n. So it's very, very small compared to n. And therefore, we can uh, neglect it in practice. It's, it's, uh, it's a very fair price for getting a root of unity. And it allows us to compute uh, polynomials uh, but products of polynomials in univariate ring of arbitrary uh, coefficient rings, commutative coefficient rings, uh, very efficiently. Um, not only in theory, but also in practice. Uh, and then we discussed integer multiplication. Integer multiplication is the, uh, yeah, similar to polynomial multiplication, and indeed the idea of Schönhager and Strassen uh, works not only for polynomials but also for integers and that this is one way of multiplying integers efficiently and other al algorithm that I, that I showed you proceeded a little, a little differently the idea there was that I turn the integers into uh, polynomials over a finite field where the size of the field is chosen in such a way that it contains uh, rules of unity of very high order, so that I can directly use the FFT and don't have to uh, do the schoenhage strassen idea. I can directly use the algorithm uh, of the second section uh, and get an n log n uh, performance. Um, I have to do that three times and then combine the coefficients. Um, I may have to do it more than three times if n is very, very large, but for every reasonable n, three times is enough. So we get uh, in practice, an n log n performance in this algorithm. That, that's very good. And then in the other direction, uh, we uh, discussed how we can uh, do uh, polynomial multiplication in po uh, polynomial rings with several variables. And, uh, <coughs> and there are two ideas. Uh, one idea was that a polynomial ring in two variables is really a polynomial ring in one variable where the coefficient ring is itself a polynomial ring in one variable. Um, so you can do uh, you, any sort of multiplication with respect to the outer variable, and then you get uh, operations, a number of operations in the inner ring, but each operation there, uh, you know how long it takes because it's again a polynomial multiplication, or an addition even, but at, at worst a multiplication. So the multiplication times of the degrees in x and uh, y would just multiply. That's one way. And the other way is the Kronika substitution. Uh, the idea there is that you take a y and uh, uh, substitute a power of x into it with a sufficiently large exponent so that you get a univariate polynomial or two univariate polynomials. And then you uh, compute the product of these two univariate polynomials with any fast algorithm that you like. Uh, that you, uh, then you can recover from this univariate product as the uh, bivariate product of the original polynomials. Okay, so this was uh, what we did so far, and that's uh, uh, all I want to say about multiplication. And now let's turn to division. So uh, division means uh, division with remainder, and uh, the problem is you have given two polynomials f and g. g is not zero. We want to find q and r. Uh, such that f can be written as q times g plus r, and uh, r is less than uh, g in terms of degree. Uh, I'm sure you know how to do this, either from elementary uh, courses that you have taken, or maybe even from high school. This is just polynomial division. So here is an illustration 
uh, of the standard algorithm or the, uh, the straightforward algorithm for doing this. And this is F, this is G, this is Q, and this is R. And we don't know uh, Q and R in the first place. We want to compute them. And the way of doing this is to take, uh, uh, yeah, to process the F from left to right and always uh, uh, yeah, replace F by smaller polynomials and always in every step divide uh, F by the leading uh, monomial of G. So I divide F uh, by this and you get a one monomial of uh, Q. This monomial you multiply by the whole G and subtract the result from uh, F and you get a difference. This difference uh, will be such that uh, there is one term less in it. That's because the, uh, this one was exactly chosen uh, that this uh, cancels. And then you keep going. You divide this one by this to get the second coefficient uh, and so on. So, And you keep going until the size of the difference, so that these polynomials get shorter and shorter in every step. At some point you will have a polynomial that is shorter than g. When this happens, then this polynomial is exactly the remainder. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how long does this take? Um, yeah, it takes too long. Because if you take a, a polynomial here and you divide it uh, by uh, uh, this, then you're actually just taking the leading coefficient and divide it by the leading coefficient. And this doesn't take too much time, it just takes one step. But then, uh, for multiplying this uh, coefficient back with the whole of g, in order to get the polynomial that you have, have to subtract from whichever polynomial you started with, uh, you have to do um, multiplication. Now, multiplication um, is an expensive operation, mm. um, but not in this case, because here we have a multiplication not of two big polynomials, but only of one big polynomial and one very small polynomial that consists only of one multiple, of, of, one, uh, of one term. So this uh, can be done in linear time, because it just means I have to multiply every coefficient of this polynomial with the respective coefficient of the q that I'm uh, just dealing with, and uh, possibly with a power, but the power just means to shift the coefficient array, so this is for free. Linear time is good, uh, but the problem is I have to do this a linear number of times, uh, because I can, in the worst case, uh, uh, I will get a reduction of the size of f in every step only by one. And I will have to do that a linear number of times until I have reached a polynomial that is smaller than the one of g, and that uh, causes the process to terminate. And if I do something that takes linear time, a linear number of times, then I have a quadratic complexity. And that's what we don't want. We want to do this faster. And the idea for doing this faster is um, that uh, we don't proceed uh, step by step, uh, or at least we, we don't proceed uh, coefficient by coefficient, and instead, uh, we, we do an idea that already was successful in Karatsuba's uh, algorithm. We divide the g in the middle. We divide the g in the middle, and we divide f by not the leading coefficient of g, but by the entire first half of g. So we, in, uh, we divide f by this, and if we do this, then we get the, uh, in, in one stroke, we get the first half of the quotient. Okay, and then we multiply back. Let me uh, let me draw this uh, a bit more slowly here. <coughs> so we have um, we have here um, f. This is f. And we divide it by g. We want to get a q, uh, and so to divide f by the first half of g, let's let me call this g1, and this g0, the lower half, and then let's say this is q1, and q0, and then eventually there will be plus r. Um, so what happens? Uh, I get, if I do this division here, um, then I will have to multiply uh, this back. So I take uh, uh, this q1, multiply the whole q1 as a polynomial 
uh, this the whole G. Oh, how do I write it? Maybe times this whole thing. Um, and then this gives a polynomial um, that, that looks like this. I can actually uh, say uh, precisely what it looks. So I can say maybe this here is uh, G1 uh, Q1. Uh, one. So that's a multiplication of this one with this one properly adjusted. Uh, and then uh, this one is uh, G0. Uh, Q1. And uh, now you take, uh, okay, maybe the sum of those, but then the difference of F with those two. And uh, now all this part uh, cancels, like in the usual division algorithm, um, because that's the way how we have chosen uh, this part. That's the idea of division with remainder. If this is the remainder of division of F with the upper half of G, well, that means that the, uh, the remainder here is slower, uh, or is smaller than this, so it uh, matches the size of this part that I uh, anyway have to deal with. So I get uh, a new f, this is, which is here. Now I do the same. I take this f and divide it by the upper half of g, and then I get the q0. So I have to multiply this again back with, uh, with g. Uh, I get again uh, G1, this time times Q0, maybe it looks like this, maybe it's a bit longer, and uh, like this. Mm, so actually this is then, okay, not, not, very, not very drawn, this is as long as this um, here. Okay, this is G1. Uh, no, G0, Q0. We take the difference, plus, minus, and this part again uh, cancels, because that's how the Q0 was chosen, and what remains uh, is exactly the remainder. Okay, so this is the, <coughs> this is the, uh, the idea of the algorithm. Um, so let's uh, see. Uh, here. Um, I, I think the animation is not quite as, uh, as detailed uh, because I haven't I have dropped the intermediate steps and just directly uh, drawn the difference, only the part of f here and there. So this is what it looks like. And uh, the question is now, so I have only two, instead of a linear number of division uh, steps that I have to perform, I have to perform Regardless of the size uh, of the problem, I have to perform only two division steps. Uh, so in, in the first, I get the first half of Q, and in the second, I get the second half of Q, and there are only two halves of Q. When I have them, then I'm done. The question is uh, how I can do the division uh, of F by the upper half of G. <coughs> uh, the, the problem I'm considering is uh, the problem of division with remainder uh, by a polynomial of a G of a certain size and uh, uh, dividing it by the upper half is again a problem of the same form. So we are again in a situation where we can reduce a problem to a problem of the same form but of smaller size. And uh, if, I have, uh, yeah, if I have two uh, multiplications to perform, then uh, what I have to do is, um, yeah, two division with remainder of half the size, plus the time that it takes to do this back multiplication of these partial quotients with the G. So there's some multiplication time uh, that is entering into the complexity and uh, some time uh, entering into the complexity for um, uh, for the recursive course. So let me show you the algorithm. Um, don't get scared, it's a, a lot of uh, text. I, I will use these uh, uh, um, identifiers. These ones I used already on the, on the scratch pad. And here I will use U for the intermediate result after one division uh, step and R for the final 
uh, a remainder. And then the algorithm looks like this. So <coughs> f and g are uh, polynomials, and there's an additional input parameter that I need in the recursion. So in, in the recursion, um, uh, the k will have s some uh, value, but uh, when, I, when I'm really originally interested only in the usual division with remainder uh, problem, I will uh, take k equals zero. And let me also assume that uh, the degree of f is twice as much as the degree of n, uh, the degree of g. The degree of g is n, and n should be a power of 2. Um, because here the, the problem of division really depends on two parameters, the size of f and the size of g. And in the context of polynomial multiplication, we said uh, that they should have the same size. Uh, somehow, but that doesn't make sense here. If I divide two things that have the same size, then I'm done in one step. So let's assume that f is twice as big as g. Okay, just for simplification. And then uh, what this uh, method returns are q and r, such uh, that they solve this slightly more general form of the division problem, where I have here an additional power of x introduced into the g, and uh, that allows me uh, in, in the recursion uh, to say something like uh, divide this by the first half uh, or the upper half of something and the k would be n half. Okay. So as usual there's a base case, it's not so interesting uh, uh, and uh, then there's this division step that doesn't cost anything. I divide g into the upper half and the lower half then I recursively compute the first the quotient and remainder, um, uh, but this remainder is not yet what I want. This remainder uh, only corresponds to uh, to the difference of, of this one with this one, so that gives this uh, remainder, but I still have to subtract this part uh, to get it right. Um, this is happening here, so for this I have to do one multiplication. Here is a multiplication of uh, big polynomial g0 and a big polynomial q1 and for this I use any fast algorithm that I have. We have discussed several of them but think of maybe schoenhard Schrasten or maybe karl or whatever you have. Uh, here I do a multiplication. And then I have to do the whole thing again. I get division, uh, a quotient and remainder by, uh, for dividing the u by uh, uh, a shifted version of g1. Okay. And this gives the q0 and the r0, and then the r0 is obtained similar as before from the, sorry, the r is obtained similar as before from the r0 and uh, subtracting from it uh, another product of two polynomials that involves the g0, which was not participating here in this division. Okay, and uh, then r is the final result. And Q is the, the quotient is obtained by putting together these two half quotients that, uh, where the upper half was obtained in the first division step and the lower half was obtained in the second division step. Okay, uh, I, hope, I hope I sufficiently justified that this gives the correct result. Um, uh, other question is how much does this cost? And uh, I claim that uh, regardless of uh, which multiplication algorithm you use in steps 5 and 7, you will end up with a cost uh, that is multiplication time times an additional logarithmic factor. So if the multiplication time itself is n log n, uh, then it's essentially n, and with this additional logarithmic factor it's still essentially n. Okay, so let's see why this is true. <clears throat> um, yeah, we have to uh, yeah we have to see proof. We have to see what the complexity is. So we said n is uh, the degree uh, of g, and uh, the uh, the degree uh, uh, let's say the, the degree of g is yeah let's let's say it's exactly n and the degree of f maybe is bounded by 2n. And then what is the cost of the algorithm when I apply it to a specific n? 
the cost is obtained from uh, two uh, ingredients. One is um, the recursive call. And I'm making uh, two recursive calls uh, to problems of the same type, but half the size. So this is what happens here in steps uh, four and uh, six. And then what else I have to do is um, these two multiplications. And what is the time that they take? Yeah, well, they just take multiplication time. So I could say uh, this is, uh, I can say this is equal to this O of M of N. Actually, it's M half, N half here, but it doesn't matter because the half is eaten by the O anyway. So, <coughs> uh, this is equal to 2 times T of N half. Oh, this is now bounded by plus C times M of N for some C. And all uh, N sufficiently large. And uh, we do again an induction proof, like we did uh, earlier, last time with Schoenhacke Strassen, uh, but here it's much simpler. Um, I have here, um, by induction hypothesis, uh, since n half is less than n, I can assume that this here has the announced complexity, so it's 2 times, um, what did I say? I said this is m of n half log n half plus c m of n. Okay, so by uh, assumptions that we had about the multiplication time, I'm using here an arbitrary multiplication time, I'm not fixing a multiplication algorithm that I will use, um, but we had some uh, assumptions about uh, that m is, uh, let's say that m is a reasonable multiplication time, and uh, reasonable means that it goes at least linearly. And if it grows at least linearly, that means I can take out the half and make the things be, make the thing. Uh, it can become smaller by this. So I can estimate this uh, by m of n, taking the half out and canceling it with this half. Okay, that's uh, one thing. The other thing is uh, this log. Uh, log n half, now the log n half is log n minus log 2. Oh, log, log 2 is 1. Uh, because we take the binary log here. And uh, yeah, so there's another constant here. Maybe call it, call this c2 uh, as usual and call this c1. Um, and then I have um, almost what I want. I have uh, C1 M of N log N from uh, here and here plus and then from the minus one here this this is crucial that I have here a minus one um, because this allows me to turn this plus into something negative and then estimate it by the final target. So uh, this minus 1 gets multiplied by this C1. So I can say this is C2 uh, minus, oh, there, there's another 2 here. Oh, no, actually it's not uh, because this got cancelled there. So it's actually this times um, M of N. Okay, and then we are through because I can say uh, without loss of generality that the uh, C uh, 1 uh, is more than the C2, and then this one is negative, and then this is altogether bounded by C1 m of n log n, uh, and that's what I want. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, 
it does this solve the problem? Uh, to some extent it does, because I said we don't uh, worry about logarithmic factors. Um, uh, but if we can avoid them, then that, uh, that, that's, that's uh, uh, it's even better. And it turns out we can avoid uh, logarithmic factors here. And this is what I want to show you next. Uh, the, the algorithm that I showed you uh, now was uh, some of the first approach uh, to division with remainder. Um, now I show you that it's uh, even cooler. We will achieve a complexity uh, that is, uh, matches the complexity of multiplication. So you can uh, divide uh, as quickly as you can multiply. Uh, there, are, there are people who believe that division is more difficult than multiplication. It's not true, uh, and I will prove it. Uh, this uh, uh, claim that I make here is exactly that uh, division is just as, in fact, at, at most, as complicated as multiplication. Okay, now for this we need an idea uh, because that, that's not entirely obvious how to approach this. Um, and uh, in order to explain this idea, I, I need a bit of terminology. Um, I want to um, uh, reverse the coefficient list of f. So um, uh, if I have f uh, as a polynomial, um, then I will say, okay, uh, here it's written down in formula, then I will replace uh, x by 1 over x in f, um, so that turns the, uh, the coefficient, now the exponents uh, x to the i into x to the minus i, uh, but I don't want to have negative exponents, so I multiply the whole thing by x to the k for a certain uh, k, maybe I take the degree of f, or maybe sometimes something different, um, and then I call this the reversal of f, uh, more precisely the kth reversal of f. So here's a picture. Let's say these are the coefficients uh, of f. Um, then the reversal of f uh, with respect to k equals the degree of f is, is just a polynomial that is exactly as long as f, but has the coefficients uh, in, in the reverse order. So what previously was the leading coefficient now the trailing coefficient, and what is, was the trailing coefficient is now the leading coefficient. Um, now, uh, k uh, need not be the uh, the degree. If it doesn't, if it's not the degree, then hopefully it's bigger than the degree. If it's bigger than the degree, uh, then it means uh, I'm I'm padding this uh, zeros. Uh, so in oh, sorry, in this so in this picture, the trailing coefficients are here, and the leading coefficients are here. So I'm shifting the polynomial towards the higher uh, exponents. If the k is smaller than the degree of f, then I'm in trouble because then I'm shifting in the wrong direction. Um, that means I would get a polynomial that involves uh, terms with negative exponents. That's no longer a polynomial, it's maybe a Laurent polynomial if you want this, but uh, uh, we don't want this. Okay, good. So now uh, let's uh, look at the division problem. Let's say we have f and g, and now let's drop the assumption that uh, uh, m and n are related somehow. So m is the degree of f and n is the degree of g. Uh, only assume that n is smaller than m, because if it's not, then there's nothing to divide. Uh, if the g is bigger than the f, then the f is the remainder and zero is the quotient. So that's not interesting. Um, uh, the, the goal is as before, we compute q and r such that f is g q plus r and uh, the degree of r is less than n. Okay, the n uh, being the degree, the exact degree of n. So the n is not a bound on the degree, here it's really the exact degree. Now look at this uh, calculation. Uh, if, if I write this with uh, explicit argument, then uh, it looks like this. f is equal to g q plus r. That's just the same as here. Now in this equation, uh, let me re uh, replace x by 1 over x. And then it looks like this. And now let me multiply um, the whole equation by x to the m. So that here I get the reversal of uh, f. Uh, m is the degree of f. So then it looks like this. Here I have the reversal of uh, f, and here, um, here I can divide uh, these 
m copies of x uh, to these two factors. So I can put n x to the n uh, as associated with g, and the remaining m minus n, I put it to the q. So that it would look like this here. Then this one is the reversal of g with respect to its degree, and this is the reversal of q with respect to its degree, because the degree of q is m minus n. And here I also split, uh, there was an m before, uh, and I want to split it in such a way that I'm taking, uh, yeah, I'm taking here uh, also the reversal of r with respect to its degree, or at least a bound on its degree. r can have a lower degree than uh, n minus 1, but it cannot have a, a bigger degree than this, so this one here will also be a polynomial, and the polynomial is multiplied by an additional power of x. Okay, so let's uh, divide this, uh, let's translate this into what I just said about the reversals. Here's the reversal of f with respect to m, the reversal of g with respect to n, and the reversal of q with respect to m, n, uh, plus, and then here uh, the x to the something moves this uh, reversal here further uh, and uh, pads it with zero because that one is already a polynomial. So this whole polynomial will be a polynomial that starts with m minus n plus 1 zeros and it's uh, a lower a lowest coefficients and then something else. This means if I take it mod this power then uh, this part will just disappear. So if I'm taking this mod then oh, this is a certain multiple of it. If I take it mod this and this will just go away. And then I have a very nice equation uh, because uh, this original equation was a bit uh, uh, troublesome if I think about this as an equation that I want to solve given f and q and I want to solve it for q and r then I have one equation with two unknowns. Um, that's not a nice equation, it looks a bit underdetermined. Of course it's not underdetermined because of this degree condition, um, but if I think of equations then the degree condition is not necessarily helpful. Uh, here I have somehow exploited this degree knowledge and translated this equation into an equation that only contains one of the two unknowns, the q, but not the r. So this is uh, cool, and here is an illustration uh, of, of this equation, uh, or actually of the previous equation before I take mod. Uh, this is f, uh, this is g, and this is q, and this is r. Now taking the reversals means I'm moving everything to the right, and now taking mod means I'm uh, taking mod here, so this uh, part goes away. Okay, so uh, uh, what, what did I gain here uh, besides eliminating one of the variables? Uh, I have another feature, another feature, well, this is the one that I mentioned, and uh, another feature, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, I have eliminated one of the variables, but if I can solve this uh, equation for Q, uh, then knowing q is enough to also get r, uh, because I can take r, I can get r as the difference of f minus g q. So if we can compute q, then we can also compute r. Uh, we didn't lose anything by uh, eliminating it from the equation, we just simplified the problem, um, uh, but we didn't lose any information that would maybe be important. The other feature is that uh, in the reversal of g, uh, the trailing coefficient, the constant coefficient, the coefficient of x to the zero, is the leading coefficient of the original polynomial g, and the leading coefficient of a polynomial is never zero. So I have here a polynomial um, which has zero as its starting coefficient, um, starting if I start from, from the bottom up. And this will be exploited now because I can now say that this polynomial here, if I view it as a formal power series, it has a multiplicative inverse. So this is also something that you may or may not have seen in, uh, in other courses. The formal power series ring uh, you surely have seen. This is, uh, informally speaking, the, the ring of all uh, polynomials where the degree may also be infinite. Um, and uh, in this ring, uh, there are. It can happen that a, a, a 
polynomial or that the power series is invertible uh, with, uh, with respect to multiplication. And this is the case, as can be shown, if and only if the constant term of the power series is not zero. Now that's exactly what we have observed to be the case here. The reversal of k with respect to n has a constant term zero. And so if I view this polynomial as a power series, then I can invert it, can compute a multiplicative inverse. But to be able to compute a multiplicative inverse means I can solve this equation. I can multiply this equation uh, with the multiplicative inverse uh, and move this to the other side and get uh, a solution for the reversal of q, but having the reversal of q is of course as good as having q. Okay, So I get the reversal of q as the product of the reversal of f and the reversal of g, considered as a polynomial or considered as a power series, then inverted. This may, may then uh, result in a power series that has infinitely many coefficients, but I don't need infinitely many coefficients because I'm taking this equation anyway mod this. So I only need the first so and so many uh, coefficients uh, of this uh, formal power series. And then multiply it with this and then I get this and then I'm done. Okay, so it suffices to be able to uh, do power series inversion. So here, here is the task to which we reduced the division with remainder problem. Uh, given a polynomial u, uh, with a, a non-zero trailing coefficient and some L, an integer, we want to find a multiplicative inverse mod x to the L. So we want to find a polynomial uh, V such that u uh, times V is equal to 1 mod x to the L. Okay, <clears throat> how do we do this? Um, I, I said at the beginning of this course that uh, computer algebra is uh, computing without approximation. Um, and that, that refers to, yeah, we, we don't uh, compute with the real numbers and uh, floating point numbers that approximate real numbers. Um, but it doesn't mean that we don't approximate at all. We, we, we still do approximation um, if necessary. Uh, but in a, a more algebraic sense. So we, we can view, for example, this polynomial V as an approximation to uh, the power series, uh, but not with respect to a Euclidean order, Euclidean distance, uh, but uh, with respect to a distance that says two uh, power series are close to each other if their difference is a multiple of a high power of, of L. So, and then here we would see the, the higher the L is, the better is the approximation of uh, uh, the approximation V of 1 over U. In the limit, if you wish, uh, uh, informally speaking, if you take the limit here, then you would exactly get a 1 over U as a somehow polynomial with uh, infinite degree here. At, uh, and this is then not a polynomial anymore, but a power series, of course. Okay, so if you think about uh, approximation, uh, what, uh, what what we have to do here is we have to solve an equation. Uh, the, the equation is here, given u, find v. And what do you know about solving uh, equations uh, or finding approximate solutions to equations? There's one method that you use, uh, that you know very well from, uh, uh, from uh, a numerical analysis. Uh, that's Newton iteration. So uh, it finds uh, Newton iteration is for approximately finding a roots of uh, uh, polynomials. Uh, so here, uh, uh, sorry, for roots, for roots of uh, functions. Uh, and here I can easily translate this uh, function or this equation that I want to solve into a, a function for which I want to find the root. So this here is such a function. Uh, because if v is the variable of the function, uh, then it's certainly true that if I take here as v the inverse of u and plug it in, then I get 1 over 1 over u. This is u, so u minus u is 0, so 1 over u is indeed a uh, root of this function, of this function which maps polynomials to polynomials. Now how would we do uh, Newton iteration here? 
Uh, Nude iteration requires to differentiate and here, okay, we are not in the business of, of calculus because there are no real numbers uh, or so, but this here is a, is a rational expression and a rational expression I can just differentiate. Why uh, not? So let's do this and uh, um, see what comes out. So what was what was the function? So we had v of v, uh, phi of v equal to u minus 1 over v. And uh, you, you recall the idea of Newton iteration. Newton iteration said uh, you, you start with some initial approximation. And in this case, we could take maybe uh, 1 over u0. This is a uh, good uh, mod x to the 1 because uh, u times uh, v0 uh, this is u0 plus something 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 and this is 1 over u0 plus something 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 but if I take it mod uh, x to the 1 then the something 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 goes away and I have just a u0 divided by u0 and this is 1. So that would be a good uh, initial uh, um, approximation and then Newton told us how to get from one approximation to the next. So uh, the the formula was that you take uh, yeah you, you take the the, the previous uh, uh, approximation and then subtract from it phi of the previous uh, approximation divided by phi prime of the previous approximation. So there's a uh, a uh, nice picture that uh, somehow shows on the graph of a on the graph of a on the graph of real valued function what happens geometrically but that's not our, our concern here because we are anyway in a, in a geometric uh, situation so let's uh, just calculate what this is so this is v k minus uh, so u minus 1 over v k divided by so what's the what's the uh, derivative of this? this is a function in v v is the variable u is a parameter so if I uh, differentiate this then I get um, 1 over v k uh, squared oh and then it turns out that we are extremely lucky uh, because uh, this denominator squared goes into the into the numerator and cancels the denominator here. So we have vk minus um, vk squared. Yeah, okay, let's go slowly. Minus u one over vk, and this is vk minus u v k squared plus v k so I can put a 2 here and we see that we don't need any division here there's a just multiplication here's a multiplication by 2 here's a square which is a multiplication and here's a multiplication of the square with u uh, so that was maybe not to be anticipated when we started from here because there's a division uh, and it would be very bad if we reduce the division problem to a division problem uh, unless it's a smaller problem we wouldn't have gained uh, very much oh okay but now this uh, is a formula that at least looks uh, useful uh, it tells me how i can get from uh, one from from one approximation to the next um, but does this uh, does this work? So this is not uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, I have not proved anything. I have just used the uh, the formula uh, that we know from Newton iteration from numerical analysis and applied it here. But I have not made any claim that it really works here. Uh, but the the theorem is yes, this is the calculation that I did. The theorem is that this really works. So this this converges. If, if you want to say it like this, in the following sense. Uh, if you take this v case, 
uh, that we have defined by this uh, uh, re yeah, by this recurrence, uh, then u times the kth of these v's is equal to one mod a very high power of x, uh, two to the kth power of x. So this means, like uh, in numerical analysis, if you use Newton iteration, and if it converges, then you double the accuracy in every step. So this is cool. Um, but let's uh, see if this is really true. I have to prove this. It's not a big deal, uh, but still, yeah, we should do it. So, uh, proof of the theorem. Uh, I already, already said uh, that uh, it's true for, so this we do an induction on a k, and for k equals zero, we have already uh, checked it above. This is this uh, calculation uh, here. Um, um, because uh, 1 is equal to 2 to the 0. Okay, So this is okay, and now we go from k to k plus 1. And what we have to uh, do is uh, to see what is uh, 1 minus u v k plus 1. Um, uh, we want this to be equal to 0 modulo a very high power. Okay, so let's just plug in this expression and I get 1 minus u and 2 vk minus u vk squared. This is 1 minus 2 u v squared plus u vk squared, where the squared now includes the u because I have 1 here and 1 here. On well, this factors, I get 1 minus uh, u v uh, k squared. And by induction hypothesis, I know that this one here is equal to 0 mod x to the uh, 2 to the k. So that means this one is equal to 0 mod, uh, by the uh, squaring, I, I get twice as many uh, zeros. In the, among the initial terms, this is zero mod x to the two k uh, um, squared. So this is um, no mod x to the two n squared like this. So, sorry. Uh, so two n squared. Uh, this is x to the two uh, k plus two k, and this is x to the two k plus one. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to show. Okay. Cool. So this really works, and the theorem is correct, and it suggests uh, the following algorithm. So here is. Uh, uh, that the Newton iteration algorithm uh, uh, written down for this specific application. So the uh, input is a polynomial u with non-zero trailing coefficient and uh, uh, an inter positive integer l. And the output is an approximation to order l of the inverse of u in the power series ring. And uh, yeah, I do what I just said. I say uh, if, uh, yeah, I start with 1 over u0, which I can do because u0 is not 0. And then I do log L iterations, because I know in every iteration the, uh, the accuracy doubles. So after log N, log L iterations, I have the desired, I have reached the desired accuracy of L. And here's what I do in every iteration. Uh, I take uh, this uh, formula that we had. As, uh, update uh, v according to this formula and what I do in addition because this uh, what I get is according to our proof only accurate uh, up to uh, this uh, uh, accuracy uh, but the formula may produce uh, polynomials of higher degree uh, but I don't need the higher degree terms so I would always throw them away because they just uh, cost time if I carry them along and they don't bring any information so I keep the polynomials at low degree, 
And note that uh, this uh, REM is, is not really a remainder computation because that would be diff yeah, that would be bad because we are constructing here uh, an efficient remainder algorithm, um, a division algorithm. So we should not use division here, but we are not really using division here uh, because this is just a monomial and this uh, remainder just means drop every term whose exponent is 2 to the k or larger. Okay, so uh, according to this discussion that we had, uh, I believe that it's clear that this is correct. I claim in addition uh, that it achieves the desired, occur uh, the, 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 the desired complexity. Um, this algorithm requires only multiplication time of L many operations in K. So uh, let's see why this is true. Um, oh, this, so for, for once we don't have a recursive algorithm. Um, uh, we have here uh, uh, just a for loop. So what we have to do in order to estimate the complexity is just sum over the cost that uh, uh, is produced by line 3 when k runs from 1 to uh, this bound. And this one is not necessary, it's eaten by the O, the one division here. Um, okay, so this is all that matters. Um, so let's see what, uh, what, uh, what comes out. Oof. Okay, so the, the Tn in this case is bounded by um, the, the time it uh, takes uh, to do uh, the multiplication here. So there are uh, one, uh, two, two multiplications here, a V uh, with itself and then with U. Maybe in between I want to cut away uh, polynomials uh, or excess uh, terms if necessary. Uh, so there are two multiplications anyway. Uh, and here is another multiplication, but this one is harmless because multiplying a polynomial by a constant takes linear time and the minus also takes linear time. So altogether I have multiplication time, uh, two multiplications, and uh, otherwise um, just uh, linear time. So this is, uh, uh, so the sum uh, i from zero to uh, log uh, um, n. <coughs> so n is the same as l uh, here. Uh, I prefer, yeah, I, I prefer to talk about uh, n in writing because that's what I'm used to. So uh, we, has, we said it's two multiplications plus uh, 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 some additions that have a linear cost. Um, but uh, of which size? So at each uh, size, at each iteration, I, I'm solving, uh, I have to do multiplication uh, problems of this size and also addition problems of this size. Um, good. Um, so what I have to do is, uh, okay, here this is a geometric sum, so this is uh, harmless. So this gives, uh, this part gives c times 2 to the log n plus 1 by the geometric series plus, and then this 2 is also harmless, goes in front of the sum, i from 0 to log n, um, m of 2 to the i. Now we said uh, that uh, we can estimate this um, to uh, above by saying this is less than or equal to multiplication time of n divided by n divided by 2 to the i. Okay. So um, this is one, this follows from one of the assumptions that we made uh, on the multiplication time. Okay, so now let's clean this up. The m of n uh, no longer depends on i, so I can move it to front and the n uh, as well. So uh, I get this here is Okay, so this here is, is uh, four, uh, 
um, at most for uh, c n where does the four come from uh, this is a factor of two and the uh, ceiling here means that it's log at most log n plus one um, so that's another plus one as uh, so another factor of two this gives the four from here and here uh, i have two m of n divided by n times the sum uh, i from uh, 0 to log n, uh, 2 to the i, and uh, this uh, is at most, uh, yeah, this is essentially the same calculation that we did to get from here to here, so this is again at most 4 uh, n, Oh, this is fortunate because this n cancels with this n, and what comes out is uh, eight m of n uh, plus four uh, c n, and then I've analyzed it even more precisely than uh, we need. Uh, I said earlier we don't uh, worry too much about determining the constants that are eaten by the O's, but here I did it because it was uh, specifically easy, particularly easy. Um, in any case, this one is bounded by this, so altogether this is O of M of N as claimed. Okay, <coughs> so uh, that means uh, we uh, have uh, done uh, most of the work. Uh, we have to just put the things together uh, and obtain, uh, in order to obtain a, a division with remainder uh, with the same complexity. But before doing so, let's do an example. You may have noticed in, in the earlier lectures that I don't do many examples. Uh, that's not because I don't like examples. It's just because the, the topic we are talking about uh, uh, often makes it that uh, examples are not very instructive. You're just seeing polynomials uh, that are getting uh, added and multiplied and you don't really see much. That's why instead of uh, uh, examples with explicit expressions. I prefer to use these pictures where uh, polynomials are represented by uh, colored bars that have certain length and uh, this is better. Uh, you see more easily what is going on there. So here let's do an explicit example. Uh, uh, if you invert this then you start by 1 over 1 which is 1 and then in the next step you get 3 and then in the next step you get two new uh, uh, coefficients, these ones we had already. Then in the next step we get four new coefficients, the first four we had already. And then uh, uh, next time you get uh, eight new coefficients, the first we had already, and so on. So here's now the fast division algorithm. There's nothing happening new here, it's just putting together what we already discussed f and g are the polynomials that you want to divide, uh, f by g, g is not zero, q and r are quotient and remainder, and okay, if m is less than n, which is uh, not excluded here, then you just uh, immediately return the result. Uh, otherwise, uh, you use the Newton iteration algorithm to compute uh, the inverse of the reversal of uh, g, first with, uh, uh, with this algorithm uh, and then multiply this inverse with the reversal of f and throw away coefficients that are too high and then use uh, this uh, uh, formula that we had in the beginning that relates uh, this yeah, that says that this here is exactly the reversal of this uh, sorry of, yeah, it's the reversal of this so it means the reversal of the reversal is what we really want and once you have q, then you get r as f minus g times q. Uh, and uh, this requires uh, uh, an amount of work that is uh, just a multiplication time, because we are not doing anything. We are doing here a multiplication, and we are doing a Newton iteration, for which we just proved that it also has the same complexity. So that's the best uh, way um, that we know how to do division in uh, with remainder and it's actually <coughs> yeah and it's uh, uh, yeah okay and so 
this, this means that you can do arithmetic operations and extension fields because this requires you to do division with remainder. Okay. Um, and, uh, but let me, let me make another uh, remark. Another remark is that um, here I'm saying world record for the complexity of division. Um, uh, it says that uh, no, no matter how fast you can multiply, you can, mul you can divide essentially with the same cost. Um, and usually world record means that uh, maybe it can be done in a better way, but uh, nobody knows. In this case, we can actually say that there's no way to improve this um, for the following reason. If you have a division algorithm that is very fast, then you can turn it into a multiplication algorithm. So let me show this as a small calculation. Um, so let's say f and g are given. And uh, suppose now we want to multiply them. And suppose we have a program that does division with remainder very quickly. And then I claim that we can uh, use this division program to compute uh, the product. So we do the opposite of, we just, of what we just did. What we just did was to, uh, get a, to obtain a fast division algorithm, assuming that we have a fast multiplication algorithm. Uh, but now I will say, uh, I assume I have a fast division algorithm and I will use it to construct a fast multiplication algorithm. And that's actually very easy. So we take uh, an n that is greater than the sum of the degrees, which is uh, the degree of the product. And then I do a division of x to the n times f by x to the n plus g. If you do this division, then what will happen? Now, the quotient is very easy to determine. Um, it's just f, uh, because you can divide uh, this one by x to the n, and well, then you just get f. So if you now multiply back, and you get um, uh, f times x to the n plus g f. And uh, if you take the difference of this, then you get minus g f. So this is g f. And uh, this one is the remainder of uh, f x n by x n plus g. So I, I don't have to compute it in this way. Uh, I, I, don't make, I, I have the assumption, or I'm making the assumption that there is a fast way of computing it, but the result must be this. Uh, this is the argument I'm making here, that the remainder is this. No matter how you compute it, it will be this. But this is the product of f and g. So uh, this small calculation shows that if you can divide quickly, then you can also multiply quickly. So in uh, terms of complexity theory, uh, in the terminology of complexity theory, this means that these two uh, problems are computationally equivalent. Uh, you can do one exactly at the same cost uh, as the other, where exactly uh, means up to multiplicative constants. So there's still the big O, um, but apart from this uh, big O, multiplication and division are equally costly. All right, so this uh, brings me to the end of uh, fast uh, division. Um, and at the same time, it concludes the first part of this uh, course, where we talked about a uh, fast arithmetic. We mainly talked about uh, fast multiplication, summarized the ideas at the beginning of today's lecture. Uh, and we also talked about uh, division today. And so these are the two main operations uh, in arithmetic, division and multiplication. Of course, there's also addition and subtraction, but these are easy from a complexity point of view. There's no need to talk about them. Um, so the conclusion is that we can do all uh, operations very fast. Um, we don't know for multiplication exactly how fast. So that's why we have introduced this capital M notation that refers to some function that measures the complexity for uh, multiplication. But we have also seen uh, some instantiations of this M that are very promising and that are also used in, in actual computations in practice. Uh, the Schoenhage-Strassen algorithm gives you 
uh, m of n is uh, n uh, log n log log n and this is uh, not quite as good as linear time uh, but practically uh, as good as linear time and uh, addition is anyway linear time so all the operations um, all the basic operations or the four basic arithmetic operations can be done in linear time so that's a, a good uh, break point uh, for the course um, let me just uh, give you an outlook of what comes next we will next uh, uh, consider some uh, more uh, some other operations that you can do with polynomials and that rely on multiplication and uh, where, where you probably have uh, seen uh, some algorithms already in the computer algebra one class and we will uh, uh, ask the question uh, what is their complexity if we take into account that we can multiply quickly so uh, it, uh, we will see that uh, um, it is not enough to just use the, uh, the algorithms uh, from computer algebra 1 and say, okay, we can multiply quickly so the algorithms become automatically more uh, um, faster. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately not so easy. We will have to go through the algorithms uh, and uh, reorganize them a little bit uh, so that uh, fast multiplication can really uh, take effect. I'll explain this in more detail uh, in, in the next lesson. Um, um, but that's, the, uh, that's a, 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 a very interesting um, uh, thing to do because um, unlike uh, multiplication where you would probably never have to uh, program this yourself because there are other people who have programmed this already and there are people who uh, do this for a living and spend a lot of time and energy into making this software really fast uh, and unless you want to become a specialist you will not uh, start competing with them uh, but what we do in the next part of the course is different uh, there we ask ourselves here's an operation uh, i know how to solve it uh, but it's still slow no matter how what i do uh, as a multiplication algorithm how can I do it differently um, so that it becomes faster than I can do fast multiplication? And this is something that if you are working in, in an area that is related to computer algebra, you may have to do yourself uh, because you may have maybe faced uh, with a similar situation when you design uh, al algorithms. So we will see uh, how this works. And uh, uh, the, the first um, uh, operation for which I want to discuss this is uh, evaluation and interpolation. Um, this is what we will do next time. Uh, actually, uh, I think that uh, because evaluation and interpolation is such a such an important topic um, that uh, even though I assume that you have covered this already in computer algebra 1, I will uh, uh, insert a, a, a quick uh, reminder, reminder, reminder about uh, what this is and what it is good for and why this is important um, before we discuss how to do this quickly uh, and exploit fast multiplication. Okay, but I'm not going to start this uh, today. Uh, let's uh, finish a little bit earlier today um, and uh, continue next time with uh, the, the second part of the course. Uh, thanks for listening uh, and see you next time.